Good evening, Internet. This is Matt Buyak, and this is the first in what I hope to be a long series of videos in which I solve the problems on ProjectEuler.net. Now, if you're not familiar with Project Euler, uh, this is a collection of uh, what appear to be uh, math problems, uh, asking typical questions involving Fibonacci numbers, uh, Pythagorean triples, um, sequences, and the like. Um, but in order to actually solve most of these problems, you usually have to do some amount of, um, of programming in addition to mathematical analysis. Um, and so that's the part which, which mostly interests me. Um, so my, um, my background, I, I prefer to use uh, C and C++ in a, uh, a Linux programming environment. And so we're going to be using uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux um, with Emacs, GNU Make, um, you know, all the old school C and C++ uh, programming tools. So if that interests you, then uh, stick around. Uh, and we'll just get right into the first problem here. So if we list all natural numbers below 10 uh, that are multiples of 3 or 5, we get 3, 5, 6, and 9. Sum of these multiples is 23, and we're, we need to find the sum of all multiples of 3 or 5 below 1,000. Uh, now, before we get into writing any code, there's actually a little bit of uh, basic setup that we're going to need to do. Uh, so let's go to um, my GitLab directory here, and we'll start by uh, making our project Euler directory. <clears throat> now, uh, we're going to be solving a lot of these problems, and so I'm going to make sort of a template here. Um, so that I don't need to, some of the basic stuff I don't need to remake every single time. I can just copy this template directory. Um, so like I said, I'm going to be using Emacs for most of my uh, work here. So let's just start off by uh, making our uh, main.cpp. And there's going to be some basic includes um, that we'll probably need, a standard library. Um, standard I.O., uh, standard int. And depending on the exact problem that we're solving, uh, some of these might might change. But most of the problems, we're going to need some of the, you know, the same, same uh, includes there. Uh, let's see here. So uh, this is all, all pretty uh, a boilerplate. If you're not familiar with the, the C programming language, um, you're going to need a, a main function here that's the, the, the starting entry point. All right, so that's going to be the basic uh, main.cpp there. Um, so like I said, I'm also going to be using um, uh, GNU Make. So go in here. Uh, so if you're not familiar with GNU Make, it's basically just a way of um, setting up a list of dependencies so that when you update part of your project, um, all the different parts will be updated as necessary. It's not even necessarily specific to uh, programming, um, but that's usually the context in which we use it. Um, so we're just going to call our uh, output here solver, and it's going to depend on uh, main.cpp. And to build it, we're going to do um, g++ uh, main.cpp o solver. Alrighty, and let's open up a shell. And so if we do make, there we go. We run our program. It, of course, does nothing because it was an empty program. So now let's go back here and we can actually solve our, uh, our problem here. So let's uh, start by saying, uh, so uh, just a point of style, I prefer to use, um, so, so with, with, with sort of, you know, classic C, um, you might see a, a type like int, integer. Um, but I come from a, sort of an embedded background and so it's, it's important to know um, the size uh, of the types that you're dealing with, um, depending on the architecture you're working with, an integer might not always be the same size. So it's, um, 
just a habit I've gotten into to always use these um, standard integer sizes where you can see the, the size is explicitly specified here. This is a 32-bit integer. Um, so we're going to say that's going to be, um, let's go back to the problem here, was that the example that it gave was, yeah, the number's less than, less than 10 there, so we'll start off with that. And we're going to need, uh, let's see, uh, sum, we're going to have uh, i is just going to be the, the index that we're iterating over. Um, that's probably all we need. So we'll say you know, sum is starting off at 0. And uh, we're going to say i is going to go from 0 to, uh, to 10. Whoops. And then we'll say this is the, the basically the only line of the program that's that actually um, involves any sort of logic or thought, um, which is that we need uh, need our integer to be a multiple of either three or five. And so um, the way you do that in C is you have this modulus operator, which is basically the the remainder. And so what we're going to say is uh, the remainder when divided by three is equal to zero or uh, the remainder when dividing by 5, let's uh, do that correctly there, um, is going to be equal to 0. And if that's the case, uh, then we're going to um, add i to our sum. And then once we're done, we're going to say um, you know, sum equals uh, you know, unsigned integer, and the unsigned integer is going to be sum. And then we're going to say make. Um, so you can see here the advantage of, of using make. Um, in our case, the, the build process is very simple. It's just that one line. But uh, potentially you could have a much more complicated uh, build setup. And no matter no matter what your setup, uh, if you're using make, you can just type make, and it'll it'll take care of it uh, if you've got everything set up correctly. So now let's run our solver, and we can see sum equals 23. So if we go back here to our um, to our problem, we can see that that agrees with the the example input. So now uh, what we're really interested in is the the sum less than a thousand. So we're going to go back over here. And we're going to change our program to be less than a thousand. Make on our solver, and this is where we find our first bug. So you'll notice I was a little. This is why you don't use hard coded values. There's a reason I uh, I added that that constant at the at the beginning, which is I was supposed to use that right there. And that's why we that's why we test to make sure that when we make stupid mistakes we can catch them. Uh, so now we have our answer, uh, two hundred thirty-three thousand one hundred sixty-eight. And uh, if we go to back to the archives here, we can go to the problem and enter in our solution. And uh, wait a minute, why is the answer already there? Well, it turns out I've actually solved a few of these already. Um, so I'm not quite coming at them fresh, but it has been quite a few years since I've looked at these. Um, but as you can see, that does match the, uh, the solution that we came up with. So that, uh, that solution was correct. Uh, for the next video, I'll actually uh, be taking an analysis-only approach to this problem. Um, this is one of the few problems you can actually solve without using any programming at all uh, if you want. So um, if that interests you, then uh, check that out.